Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be jumping back into Ross Correctional Facility in Ohio. We're going to witness an inmate go through a process called prison bankruptcy. Yeah, I know a lot of people think we're already poor and broke when you go into prison, but believe it or not, there's a little bit of money that you can have to make your time a little easier. And this, guys, is about to be snatched clean from him. And it's also going to show how... In, in my eyes, a lot of these individuals become goons or ruthless and do things that they probably wouldn't have done if they did have a little bit of money. So if you enjoyed this type of content, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. Write an email to YouTube, tell them I need a million subscribers. And check out the playlist with over 1,400 videos for you to start watching today. I call it the den of iniquity where violence is respected more than intelligence. You want to do it for real? You want to do it for real? I didn't think so. A oh, person man. doesn't care whether or not you have intelligence or not. I hate to stop it so soon, but I got to speak on this guy's outburst. First and foremost, don't ever get in someone's face like that unless you're ready to go. I did one time in jail and dude fired off on me, man. Had no idea that was coming pushed my tooth all the way back to the white meat. You want to do it for real? I didn't think so. In everyday life in here, it's it's a matter of a person disliking you for who you are, what you're about, what you look like. I think that, uh, Whether you've got money and another person doesn't have money, you have envy. And envy is the breed of all hate inside of the penitentiary system. That guy is absolutely right. Prison is nothing but a den of iniquity. See, everything that happens in prison pretty much happens on the streets as well. Just in prison, you see it right in front of your face. Sexual activities, stabbings, whatever, you know. Out here in the streets, people would do these things in the dark. But in prison, even if it's done in the dark, someone's going to see it, hear it, smell it, something. This guy right here happened to have shot two people, and he's already one month into his prison sentence. But he's about to find out what exactly prison bankruptcy really is. I ain't been here a whole month, but I think there's a couple dudes in here that's already jealous of me. Because within my first week, I bought these new pair of shoes down here. It's Reeboks. And um, I bought these sandals, and I bought a, part of, a pair of Jordans for $60. Damn. Now I got new clothes. I got a bunch of new clothes. You don't see me nothing raggedy no more. Hey, I, I know some people jealous of me. Step I ain't up. gonna lie and make, make myself sound like a king, but I already got followers. The popularity in here is someone like the popularity on the streets. Because the store man or the dude that got all the goodies that everybody want or whatever is like popular. I'm the youngest dude in here. And all these older dudes are following me just because I'm making this little bit of money. Chaz, he's, he, he's real new, so I can understand him wanting to get his name up. I like Chaz a lot, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, that's that's like my little homie for real. And uh, But I, he, he got a lot of time to do. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was young, you feel me? And he got a lot of time to do. He wants to uh, hurry up and get a name out there for himself. And um, he wants to really get it established. <laughs> yeah. And that's the reality of things. There's some people in there that want to get their time done as fast as possible, stay the hell out the way, and move on with their life. But there's some people that go in there knowing they got a lot of time and they're about to make a legendary name for themselves. A lot of these guys too, they, they build up their reputation for when they get out onto the streets. A lot of gangsters on the streets respect individuals that did a lot of time in prison, especially if they are calling shots and had a little bit of power in there as well. Trust and believe when they hit the streets. For that lifestyle, it's going to help him dramatically. Ross Correctional Institution is where I've grown up at. The White Morpheus. 
I've been involved with the White Air and Resistance. Been in the hole because of gang-related activity. I've uh, experienced a level of violence that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Drama jumps off. You got you got the ABs in here. You got blood. You got Crips. You got everything you can think of. If it escalates, these guys get out of control. Who's it going to affect? It's going to affect me. If they come my way, do I need to sharpen something up real quick? Um, do I need to get a lock and a sock? What do I need to do? You know what I mean to protect me? I'm a convict. I just get involved, and if things start happening out here that I don't want, and it's starting to affect me. I get upset. It's one of those things being institutionalized, whatever you want to call it. It just comes natural to you. They bring the drama inside this cell. That'd be a mistake right there, man. That'd be a mistake. When he said that, I really believed him, man. That guy looks like he probably killed someone. Just judging a book by its cover, but we should never do that, right? It's two people that were two from two different cities, had animosity because of something that they were representing, and uh, names got called, and apologies didn't get said, so it got deep real quick. I remember the first prison I ever stepped into, okay, it was called Deep Meadows. It was a reception center. It's not reception anymore, it's a main facility. But I didn't know what was going on. I saw a couple of the guys I hang out with uh, separating and grouping up. And I saw a couple other guys I hang out with uh, separating and grouping up. But it wasn't just them. It was other people as well. And come to find out, it was about to be a riot between two different cities. Richmond versus Tidewater. Richmond's the capital of Virginia. It's a little bit up north to the west. But also the surrounding counties. People that lived around Richmond would group up with those Richmond cats as well. And Tidewater, where I'm from, is composed of seven different cities, all the way on the east coast of Virginia, right by the water. So yeah, stuff like this does happen. And sometimes you get pulled into it and you have nothing to do with it. Best bet in that type of situation is, yeah, you know, link up with your people, but try to stay the hell out the way. Fortunately, nothing happened in that situation, but it was definitely uh, a crash course into something I wasn't ready for. Keep in mind, it's my first time ever being in prison. Usually it'd be gang fights, city fights. Columbus versus Cleveland or Cleveland versus Cincinnati. It's real calm, you know, you got these guys around here playing chess, checkers, games, you know. Acting See, like acting like they all fun and games, yeah, but but it ain't. in the twinkling of an eye, we can die. So I had to run it back. In case you don't know what we're looking at, this board game is called Risk. You try to conquer the world, man. And they had this in the prison I was in as well. And I used to play this with lifers, man. And, and I'm not going to lie, I almost got killed because of it. I hated this game, man, so I didn't give a damn. I didn't think anybody would either, but... Because no one really played it that much, right? But uh, someone definitely did. I ended up taking all those little plastic pieces right there because they were perfect to burn for prison ink man you just light the little rifle and it just burns like a little candle all those little pieces were absolute perfection for prison ink man so i made a bunch of ink and it was a good day until someone found out that all the pieces most of the pieces were gone they started snapping in the pod screaming yelling and uh yeah i i fl flew under that radar that whole ride funny game yeah, but, but it ain't. and the twinkling in my eye you could die I've been here. I ain't like it. It was too quick, bro. I fight. What? Chaz is looking to fight. Like, yeah, that's that's exactly what he wants. For Chaz, that's gonna be like a huge boost in his ego, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, Chaz, yeah, we don't we don't want to want with Chaz. It's gonna be like, it's what we call like a bully bully status. Like, so now he can blow through here like when nobody really say nothing to him. I respect it, but I just wish he would be more, more like patient, you know what I mean? Just more settled down. To me, three fights in a week, three fights in a day still wouldn't even be too much. Well, bro, it's because you ain't gotten beat. Like I seen some people get beat. 
And once that happens, man, you really think twice about fighting again. But, yeah, this is not the mentality that you want to have in prison. And this, this guy must must be the alpha in the pod to be speaking like this. Because there's other facilities where I know for a fact. He would not be no boss in no way, shape, or form, or head honcho, man. He would fall in line or get dealt with. So, uh, yeah, th this guy might just be running this pod and he it's getting to his head. He thinks he's got all the power, all the juice. He might. I'm not sure. I'm just saying this is how a lot of people think if they are one of the toughest guys in the pod. It's called power tripping, man. You know, people go through it even when they got a lot of money as well. But don't think for a second that you can't get God. You gotta keep in mind, all of this really revolves around money as well, you know, intimidation, fear, violence, it, it all boils down to getting more money. And the news that this guy's about to get is gonna crush his whole hustling career. Pissed the f off. Yesterday, got a letter in the mail, the wrong kind of letter. I thought I was gonna get one from one of my little chicks or something. Got one from the state of Ohio. Mm. I gotta pay restitution. Now that letter he got is bad news, like I said, okay? It's a letter of restitution for the individuals that he shot. He's doing 20 years for it as well, but he has to pay back, you know, medical costs or whatever. And this is how they do it in Ross, okay? They take every last penny you get. Everything. It doesn't matter. There's no holding nothing back. They take everything until you pay that debt off. So this guy is literally bankrupt until he pays back those thousands upon thousands of dollars. And then usually people that are in these situations, they take it to a whole nother level to make sure that they can eat, rob and extort and stuff like that. So not saying that's what this guy is going to do, but if I were to guess, that's probably the route he's going to take. Without money, there's no survival in here. I won't be able to buy nothing, no hygiene, no nothing. And uh, they taking everything I get, whatever gets sent on there. So the money I got on there right now, they take it. You can't just hustle for nothing. They take my money, I won't be able to develop nothing at all. Piss me off, man. Yeah. Take my money, I didn't even did. Mm. Took my money and I ain't even did nothing, man. Who knows? Maybe he wasn't the shooter. Maybe he was just in the car with his homeboy and got caught up in the mix. That'd be horrible, wouldn't it? No, you ain't even shoot nobody, but you're still being charged and fined for everything. But honestly, man, if you ain't got no money in prison, it is going to be so rough for you. You're going to be hungry all the time. Nobody's going to really want to deal with you because you ain't got no money. Can't even have a friendly gambling game for a soup or a bag of chips or something because you ain't got nothing. Nobody's asking you to bar nothing. Nobody's gonna come ask you for advice or kick it. Nothing, because you ain't got nothing. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. Someone's gonna kick it with you. This commissary might be my last one. Oh, let's see if it gives it to him. Dude, just tell me, spend as much money as I can just in case they try to take my money. I mean, this could be my last time buying something that I can eat. Just think about you being on the streets at making making nine dollars a month. It's the same thing in here. What you gonna do for nine dollars a month? You gonna switch your game up? You gonna start robbing? I told y'all. Um, bring the real Chaz Ramon White out. To be honest with you, I'm I'm get super violent. I'm choice. I'm I'm gonna have to get super violent, super greedy. Grind me is what I call it. I'm going to have to. See, I tell y'all this all the time. Man, people do this type of stuff because they have no hope. They have nothing to lean on, man. And this guy's at his very end. He knows he's got 20 years in a prison where people are starving. He ain't going to let himself go starving, man. I already seen that in his eyes when I first started watching. So I believe prison and when they get out in the streets, man, they have to give these individuals a little bit more hope, a little bit more of an incentive to do good. If not, then the violence and everything's just gonna keep on going. I mean, it'll always keep on going, violence in prison, 
but it could definitely be lowered dramatically if people had just a little bit of hope. A little bit more extracurricular activities, stuff like that, you know. But there's also people out in the streets that believe inmates should have way worse of a punishment that they're getting catered to in these American prisons. But, you know, like like y'all already know, I've been to prison two times, seen uh, multiple facilities. And there's a lot of really good guys in prison, man. They're just trying to change their life and become a person like me, trying to get out and do what's right, get that white picket fence and raise a family. You want those guys going through hell in prison if they've already learned their lesson, you know? So you gotta think about those type of individuals as well. But that is prison bankruptcy, man. You wanna stab someone, shoot someone, run them over, break their car, break their stuff, whatever, you're gonna have restitution. And it doesn't matter if you're out in the streets or making a $12 funky check a month in prison, they're gonna come get theirs and you're gonna be hungry as hell, so. Just be prepared if that's a situation for you. Some states will take it off.